What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today we're taking a look at an extremely special one from Shirogorov. This is their Astrum Custom Division Knife, which uh, I don't know how many of these are currently out there, but it is in very high demand, and um, rightfully so. Super, super cool knife with a blend of kind of the 110, 111 size in a oversized neon type package with the liner lock. It's an absolute beast, punching light years ahead of its weight class with some cool designs, lots of cool features. I'm just super excited to talk about this one today. You will have seen my Astrum Sprint Run video now, um, or if you have anyway. Um, geez, probably about a month ago is when I released that one, which was super cool, did well. And uh, this is its, I guess, little brother. I don't know if you want to call it a little brother or a sibling, but either way, this is the one we're talking about today. Really, really excited. So as a reminder, guys, check out bladezilla.ca, where a lot of the Shirogorovs and other knives featured on the channel are available. And here we go, bladezilla.ca. Right now I've got a bunch of cool ones in, including the new uh, RJ Martin uh, collab, Arctic Overkill, some new Blackwood uh, Ursus, some Stellars, Halloween Hattie, a bunch of Hatties, a bunch of, bunch of cool stuff. So anyway, all in stock, in Canada, ready to ship, bladezilla.ca. So I guess now that we got that out of the way, let's just take a quick walk around this knife and see what we're working with today. Real cool. Uh, the colors on this, you know, from all the photos that I've seen, I really thought it was like super, super turquoisey, and it's not. Like it's more of like an ice blue, kind of got some, you know, hidden turquoise, and like just it's got all kinds of colors, and it's a very gorgeous knife. Tons of milling in every direction you can imagine, everywhere from the kind of bear claw behind the pivot, um, you know, all different planes, all different coarseness levels as well as you can kind of see in the handle here. There's just so much to talk about today. So grab a coffee, grab a, uh, a beer, a scotch, a whiskey, a uh, bubbly, whatever you want. Um, and let's let's get into this, like just a super cool knife. I've got fingerprints all over it already. I'm just sweating with, uh, <laughs> with stuff to talk about. So um, let's get some measurements, do some comparisons, get some weights, you know the drill. Let's get started here. So, Astrum, let's go. So we are coming in at uh, about nine inches, little little under little under nine inches. That's what she said. Uh, with a blade of about four inches to the end of the grind. So it's a, it's a big one, right? So uh, center choil about four and a quarter. It's a big knife. Handle will be around five inches or so. Uh, they're under four and seven eighths, something like that. Now, in comparison. You know, the logical one would be, uh, you know, is it a 111? You know, do we do we have a comparable 111? Everyone thinks because of the blade size, it's so big, all this stuff. Well, here's a 111, and it is in no way, shape, or or form anywhere near the size. Like it is minuscule in comparison. So if we grab the 111, we'll grab uh, let's go quantum. We'll step it down to a quantum. And then we'll step it down to Astrum. So there's our Quantum. And there's our Astrum. All different kind of profiles, right? So we've got instead of the instead of the obviously uh, you know or a liner lock, frame lock, liner lock, uh, well, I guess apron lock, whatever you want to call it. But lots of variance between the sizes. I would put it more in the kind of quantum F95 territory. Uh, versus the 111, so we'll get rid of that 111. Uh, we'll grab the F95, which as you know is a very similar to the Quantum, size-wise, just different kind of design, and you can kind of see the layout and the handle, right? Quantum versus F95, and F95 is Shira Goroff's um, Sebenza, so to speak, super cool knife, and they've made tons of different variances of the F95s, and it's just, it's a great knife. I absolutely love it. I've had, geez, dozens and dozens of them that come through, and uh, it's, it's a real nice knife. Quantums have not been as available, 
but a uh, really cool knife nonetheless. So we're going to move that up here and we'll get into the small guy here. So let's grab the, the Kami for reference. We will grab the Vegas V cards. There's that guy, and I can I can swap these around. They're very similar size wise, but uh, just for just for comparison's sake, it's always good to kind of have some next to each other. We can grab where's a neon? There's a neon or a hadion in this case. So also very cool, old school custom division knife, but nonetheless amazing. Uh, we can grab, what else we got here? Uh, Sinkovich, which is, I guess, very thin and long as well. I'm not saying it, not saying it. Very thin and long. Uh, very similar, actually, but a little, little chunkier in the handle, a little different profile as well. We can grab a Dr. Death. Full tie, also very cool. I've got an RJ Martin somewhere here, Russian Overkill, which is a very different knife, but uh, nonetheless, full tie, special edition on rollers. We can grab the Sigma as well, which has been floating around for a little while. I've got to do something with that. I've got to film that knife. Um, Stellar, do I have a Stellar here? Yes, there's a Stellar for size comparison. Which is a recent recent launch on a knife, obviously, in the last year or so. I guess prior to that, custom divisions and uh, sprint runs. I did the Kami. What else do I have here that I want to kind of compare it with? That may I guess I could do. No, I got an F3. That just happens to be beside me. There's an F3. Not a fair comparison. Production versus uh, everything else, but basically an F95 size wise. So we're not going to give that any more attention than it needs because. The star of the show is the Astrum, and uh, rightfully so. So what is the Astrum? Well, it's a custom division knife, magna cut blade, which I don't know if I even showed that yet. Magna cut blade, beautiful done. We've got, you know, polished, or I guess the satin flats. Let's get this fingerprints off here. Satin flats on the blade itself, which just look like ridiculous. Um, just beautifully done. We've kind of got that fighter jet cockpit in the Astrum, which I love. It just looks so nice. It's running on single row roller bearings, which we'll talk about. The hardware itself is, you know, kept the pivot system. It's got all the bells and whistles for sheer gore off. All the latest 2024 features, it has it all. Where do I start with this knife? I, I don't... I've had this knife now with me for, I think, about a month. And I've thought so much about how to film this and show its color. And I guess the best thing to do is just film for, I don't know, half hour. Try to do a bunch of angles. Hopefully the light bounces off it and gives you guys an idea of what it's like. Because every single picture I have shown of this... Or, or show, sorry. I have been shown of this knife. I'm just going, it's it's green, like, it's kind of meh, it's green, it's a loud knife, and it's not. It's like this icy, tealy, it's just so unique, and then you get real light on it, and it looks even better. And this one right now, I've, I haven't cleaned it, so it's got some fingerprints, it's got some some oil on it uh, from fingerprints and whatnot, and, and I just wanted to show it in its true nature, and I'm sure if I could shine it up and make it brighter than it already is. To me, this is, it already looks like a an excellent cut on a diamond because it's just emanating light from every angle possible. It's just ridiculous. Um, so let's get started, I guess. So we've got this super cool kind of bear claw micro milled pattern in here that you think is like this big, deep countersunk kind of hole based on the profile. And like, look at it. It's not like at all. It's hardly even noticeable. It's very flat. Um, the hardware itself, the closer you get and you look at that hardware, and I don't know how close the camera is going to allow me to do this, but the closer you look at that hardware, the more milling you see on this, and it's ridiculous. And once again, it's flattened, it's rounded, but from a side perspective, it's not anything crazy. It's held in place with a bearing underneath that cap, 
so that it cannot spin, which is awesome because you don't want these to be clocked all over the place. It uh, it's got single roll bear or single roll roller bearings underneath, which uh, I don't know where they label this particular knife. I'm assuming inside here somewhere, or it might be on that side. I'll grab my little light. I think it's on that side on this, just based on how they do the layout. But normally it's on the other side. You should see a little logo inside there. Yeah, behind the jipping, the little round sun-looking thing. Now, for those who don't know, single roll roller bearings are incredible. They feel ridiculous. They're so smooth. They're silky. They're controlled at every single angle. They'll they'll sit there and hold and then just fall and float home. Uh, they're found on all well, with most with some exceptions, most of the custom division and uh, most custom division and, and special edition knives, collaborations, etc. Depending, there's rules, exceptions to every rule. And then from there, when, you know, the only step up would be double row roller bearings, which once again are on their full customs, uh, with few exceptions. Some are single row roller bearings, and some are actually even multi row bearings. So it's at their premium end of their their knife world. It's silky smooth, and uh, it's not just there to provide smoothness and, and silkiness. It's there practically because what you're doing is you're actually providing side-to-side -side stability on this interface in here. So it's very practical. Uh, but from my perspective, it's just ridiculously smooth and uh, just... If you're going to buy one of these knives, be careful. That's all I can say because... They're so smooth and they feel so good in hand that you're going to end up buying more of them and it could cost you more than the knife, right? So uh, perhaps you make the wife angry and she leaves you because you keep buying more knives. You know, these are things you have to factor into the cost of custom division knives. They're that good. I joke, but I really am not joking in any way. So beyond the super cool cap the pivot system on that hardware, we flip it around and we look at the other side. Where we've got Shirogorov's kind of standard hardware, uh, other than it's not standard at all. You know, we have the standard bit configuration, right, which is their flathead, uh, which you guys have seen lots of stuff on. I've done some videos on, uh, I've shown the tool, I guess I could show a custom position tool here. If it wants to focus, I can't help it because my finger is not able to focus. That's their custom division tool, and inside that you'll have all the fancy tools you need to do, even the reverse bit, which, fun fact, is... Above the clip there, that's the reverse bit. But this one, let's let's start at one and go to the other. So we've got a flathead screw. Yes, you could use a penny. Yes, you could use a, a credit card folded on itself. Um, no, I do not recommend either of those for this knife. If you're able to spend the kind of money this knife costs, and from what I'm seeing online right now, um, you're in at least five to six thousand US, and this is being filmed, uh, you know, early 2024. I don't know what that's going to be looking like a year or two from now. I would presume only going up. Okay. Get the right tool. They're, you know, between 500 and 800 bucks on the secondary. Or it shows around that 500 buck mark. Um, you know what? Get the right tools for the right jobs because they're going to last forever. And uh, they're just going to work. And not cause you any headaches or issues. And uh, it's just going to fit like a glove. So, anyway. I digress. Um, further beyond this bit here, uh, you will see, if you're watching in 4K, I don't know how close you can get on this lens, how it's going to work. It's not my macro lens that I take photos of knives with. But once again, just like this side, you get all this micro milling that's found extensively on the hardware, which just looks incredible uh, under sunlight or anytime you're sitting in there and you've got your knife at your desk and uh, you're just veering at it giving it the, the sexy time eyes, and uh, you catch the light, it just looks so good. And then beyond that, it's actually polished as well, all around the perimeter, which is so far and above some of the other uh, hardware that they do. So it's just, it's kind of got a polishy satin vibe to it, which just looks terrific. You've got the duplicated bear claw that I call it, I don't know what they call that, but I call it the bear claw. And then you've got the little five ridges kind of found on the the 110 KS the kickstop that is kind of the design influence there which is there as well as on the back down the handle there those little little bubbles which look great honestly it's uh, just a nice little influence on the Astrum I got a lot of kind of wing 
vibes, like flying like a like an angel wing. That's what I get out of this when I look at this knife. You know, you see the coarseness that changes in three different steps, which is just like, I don't know how many passes it takes to do that, but it just looks incredible and looks ridiculous. And is so unnecessary that uh, it just totally makes it worth it. They are, they're starting to pinch this in a little bit more on the handle, which uh, I'm going to just show this. The tolerance is in here. I'm trying to be careful not to touch the blade to the, the board here, but like, look at the tolerances on that flipper tab. Come on, let's focus there. There we go. Like this is, this is ludicrous. It's so tight. And ridiculous like it's just so the tolerances are incredible on uh, a production knife like this which there's 50 of in the world they're not made yet as far as I know I don't believe that there's uh, 50 out there as far as I know I think there's about 25 of them or 20 um, right now just for reference if anyone ever grabs this particular one there's the COA on mine so you know what knife it is um, uh, these things move around all the time and then uh, sometimes it's cool if you find this one and you never know um, let's crack this guy. Actually, no, no, we're not going to go there yet. Let's talk about the pocket clip. Super simple uh, pocket clip. We've got the reverse bit above it, which is not really the star of the show anymore. The uh, the pocket clip matches the backspacer, which looks great. Uh, absence of any kind of, you know, pivot hardware. I was kind of expecting something here, but uh, we don't have any match, matchy match. Typically they do one, two, and three. But in this case, they just did the backspacer and that beautiful pocket clip, which is classic, timeless, but very much uh, practical. You're going to get about that much uh, of the knife sticking out of your pocket, which is a fair amount, but it's not a big knife. So totally reasonable. I really, really hope they maintain the sizing of this um, identically with a production knife because I love the neon, and to me this is like a big neon. Uh, so super cool. If we go further beyond the pocket clip, if we look underneath it, once again, extensive milling all around and underneath it. And if we peek underneath, you'll see two little screws that are hidden from, you know, a side view. You don't see the screws, but when you look from the side underneath that clip, boom, boom, there's two screws, which I assume is holding the liner lock in. I haven't looked, but on the sprint run, that's the way they did it. That's what those are for. As well, the clip is attached internally. So a lot of work kind of going on beneath the surface on this one. Which is just incredible. And there's so many angles on this that I'm just trying to show as much as I can as I, as I move it around. Because the milling here is a real, real nice one. You know, you've got the, the wings as I call them, right? The wings kind of flowing off the claw. And then you've got micro milling underneath the clip all around. Just an absolute beautiful knife. Uh, if we continue around, let's look at that backspacer one more time before I crack it open and look at other features. So we've got a lanyard uh, lanyard hole on the side here, which, uh, you know, I will say this. Beautifully done. I appreciate it. You know, I always show the Stellar. The Stellar's one from the top. You know, you get a little bit of a hole uh, on the clip, right? So that's how you attach it. Um, so well, how, do, how have they been kind of going around it? Well, lately they've been integrating it into the backspacer, like on the Quantum here. And from the side, no holes. From the top, totally practical. You can use it, put a, your paracord in there, and uh, it's just kind of hidden from view. This guy, you'll notice, sticks out just a little bit. Well, why do they do that? Why would they want to stick that little blade out? Sorry. Why would they want to stick that clip out further than the frame? Doesn't make sense, does it? Until you look at that blade. Huh. The blade sticks out from the handle. So, let's just extend the design of the backspacer. And, oh, let's make it super, super thin and ridiculous tolerances. You're looking at this extremely zoomed in and focused, guys. This is not a big knife. There is not much room of any in there for any errors to go wrong. Oh, by the way, inside there, there's micro milling. Just be aware. It's incredible. 
like just ridiculous milling lines on this one. It's it's at another level. Like I thought the mini quantum was ridiculous. The Astrum is like a step up from the mini quantum in terms of detail level. It's I don't I don't know. Maybe they got new equipment in Russia. I don't know, but it seems like they're doing more than they used to. And it's all in the micro milling. It's just incredible. I would love to know the significance of the five dimples as well as the five up here. I don't know what those are for, um, but super cool and all different sizes. There's no two that are the same. So another detail that requires four different tooling steps or five different tooling steps, which is a nice detail. Whereas up here, I don't know if they're all the same or not. I can't really tell or different depths, but they look pretty similar down there. They are not. Very cool detail. The clip itself, I'm kind of confused why they angle it the way they do. Typically when they angle the clip to one side like that, it's hard to show. Uh, if you can look in there, and I'll move it around. See how the, the clip touches on one side? They typically do that so that the, that leans onto the frame versus the lock bar. Um, I don't know the design on that, but there will be a reason for it. They do not do anything. This is Shergoroff. They do not in do anything by chance or by trial or without purpose. So there's a reason why it angles onto one side. So super cool. How about we get into the inside of this bad boy? So let's walk down the blade with my greasy fingerprints. So CD, we've got a cool logo. I love taking macro shots of the CD because you can tell it's uh, it's not done by uh, by a laser all the time. There's variances in it, and the closer you zoom in on there, you can actually see kind of some uh, tolerance differences. So I'm assuming it's somewhat done by hand, because it's just really, uh, you know, under light and under high magnification, it's real cool. As I mentioned, we've got that cockpit kind of vibe going on. We've got some very micro uh, jimping up top, very comfortable, you know, my hand falls, I'm an extra large glove, and uh, my finger falls nicely onto it. And then in conjunction with kind of the bubbles on the out external, it's very, very soft internally, but very practical. Your finger falls on it nicely. As we go down the blade, you'll see there's a nice spine that's very rounded, uh, sorry, not rounded, beveled, but flat on top, and you can kind of basically go down right to the end. And then as we go down to the tip of the blade here, nothing fancy, no reinforcements, no super expanded edge, nothing like that. Just a very big, long, thin blade. The edge of the blade itself is mere polished. As you kind of move around, you can kind of see just a nice little edge. And once again, the, you know, this, this, is a, this one came to me new from show. And, uh, you know, you, you do see variances where... You can tell it's all done by hand. It's very thin. I would put this at probably a 3 mil blade, if I'm guessing, uh, which is kind of the new micro thin stock that they've been doing, which is awesome. Detent. Oh my god, I could just do that all day. I hope uh, I hope the, the microphone picks up some of this sound on this. It's just solid. And just silk, just silky smooth. Um, I, I will go inside here. Let's take a look if the camera wants to cooperate. The tolerance isn't here. It's so tight, it's going to be tough to see much. But it's oh, another piece of art inside. Deep, deep milled pockets. Micro milling within those pockets. Um, attachments via the smaller driver screws internally on the clip on the back spacer and the tab lock or the apron lock sorry uh, just beautifully done all, all the way around it's you you take this thing apart and you look at it and your world would be blown because it's like these are all parts of a knife you don't need to see you don't need to open up and add money and costs and expenditures to to show these spots on a knife but sure, go off. So like, yep, let's make the inside of this even better or the same as the outside. It's just at a whole other level, and it'd be things like look at the look at the tab itself. Look at the the 
the engagement, the locking mechanism itself. It's This is where I would take some photos of because it's just ridiculous. All these lines that are micro milled that you don't need to have that just make it look so incredible. I'll try to get it from the other side here. Well, I don't know if this side actually has much. I think it's pretty blank. It's the inside that has the beveling on it. There you go. It's just And it's everywhere. Like, there's spots all over this knife. You see a little shiro bear. That's a nice little Easter egg on the inside where the, the roller bearing logo would normally be on the other side. There's a little shiro bear in there. That will be a cool pull. picture to take. Never seen that before. Um, they are individually numbered, and I'm going to flash the light inside here. I don't know where they're stamping that. Probably on the heel or the underneath the back spacer. Yeah, under the back spacer here, just inside, literally on the inside of it. So I got CD230322. Pretty cool. And then once again, more micro milling on the inside, places that it doesn't need to be. We've got centering on the underneath of the backspacer, which I showed earlier. Just looks ridiculous. All over the place, just ridiculous. Just a very fine example of a beautiful knife. Crisp, smooth, clean, sharp. Uh, you know, when they when they move this one to production, it's going to be... I, I don't know how they maintain the sizing on it, because, you know, I thought the Stellar production was tight tolerances, and they, they knocked that out of the park. I don't know how they translate this to a production knife, if they do. I, I don't know how they do it, because it's just so... There's no room. It's like aerospace grade level tolerances everywhere. So it'll be interesting to see. Maybe they just keep a flat stone wash on top and maintain some edge work. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. The flipper tab is very forward. Once again, I'm noticing this now. And I do like to show this on the uh, Dr. Death. So if I, if I look at the Dr. Death, see how far the tab is back from the center point of the pivot? Think of this as a, going to a bigger gear on a bicycle on the back. So the further away you go, the easier it is for that tab, which is less, or I guess it'd be more leverage, which means it doesn't come out as quick when you pull on it, right? So you're you're increasing the distance in a circle. So that's why when this one, you fail, you can fail it, right? See what I'm saying? You can fail the detent and it's not going to fire out, meaning that you get used to it and you just give it a little more gas and it comes out no problem. But it all starts with how far that tab is off of the center point of that um, pivot. Now if you go to like an F95, you can kind of see that it's always kind of forward. It's a real nice sweet spot just in front of it. The heavier the blade swing, the more forward they tend to move it. This one's uh, nice. It's nice. It's forward. Uh, I'd say it's kind of a combo of kind of a Quantum and an F95 and how they put that flipper tab in front because uh, on the Quantum, for example, see it's built into the frame. That whole angle, it's nice and flat. Right, the F95, they move it back. Let's grab that F95. The F95, they move it back, and your finger finds a nice little spot here when you go to flip it. The Astrum seems to be kind of like an in-between where it's not really built into the tip, right? There's no bevel that's built into, but you still get a little bit of a spot in front of it that naturally you wanna, your finger will find it. And it's just nice and comfortable. It's a good size knife. Like, to me, I was expecting it to be a lot bigger than it is. And uh, it's just a good solid size. Magna Cut is another thing where I, I uh, the jury's out. We'll know more about Magna Cut in a few years here, if it's good, bad, ugly. Um, I think it's good. Right now it's kind of perce perceived as a premium. For me, give me M398 or S90V all day. But, you know, everyone says it's the new cool thing, so let's give it a chance. See how it performs. Actually, you know what? If I'm asking for any material, I like Vanex. I just think it's just a cool material. It's got a nice name, too. Which is obviously the only reason you buy it, Vanex, right? It's because of the name. Let's get that out of here. 
before it keeps focusing on it. Um, what else can I talk about in this one? So obviously fit and hands nice. You know, the clip, I'm trying to think here, though, no, everything's rounded, no hot spots. You know, it's not a deep blade, so I, I guess, you know, I have heard feedback of people saying, well, it's it's like a big letter opener. I understand that, right? Very shallow drop point, right? Still very usable, more so than like a Tanto or something. Just a beautiful all-around knife. Oh, it's just a delicate little click. It's just a very well-done design. Um, be interesting to see what they do with this knife when it comes to production, how they maintain this. Um, obvious drawbacks from the knife, the cost, which is what it is. The back spacer seems to not fully go all the way up the back, uh, which would be nice to kind of close that off, but what do you do there? Uh, you know, there's probably a reason for it, and I'm assuming it has to do with the more you bring that up, the more depth there is to the overall material there. And uh, which ultimately means that the, the drop point will not fit in the handle, which means you change the design, I'm guessing. But uh, either way, it's not the end of the world to me. I like that they squish in the frame here, so when you flip it, you know, it's nice and smooth. Where your fingers fall. Oh, P.S. Look at inside. I don't know if you're going to see this design, but if you look inside the front of the squish, there's even more milling right right inside here it's like another little easter egg spot i remember the sr had this it's hard to show um, but another area of detail that you really don't need to do i i'm not gonna be able to show it there's no point in trying there's like three little lines on the inside of this knife i don't know how they do that ridiculous um so yeah i guess i, I think i may have talked about everything some magnet cut single roll roller bearings Custom division knife, polished edges, fighter jet window, bear claw plus angel wings, apron lock, just uh, you know beautiful backspacer that's extended beyond the handle, uh, nice 3D milling but still rounded and curved, just beautiful example of a Shirograf custom division that I think the design itself is going to be timeless for years to come, and uh, and I really do hope you know there's a uh, couple of custom division knives that I just go ah. I, I don't want to see them go to production. Um, this one I do. I would love to carry one of these on the daily because it would be just like a big neon. If I've got a neon zero, this is a, a production neon, right? So tell me that that is not, you know, like look at the profile of even the uh, the frame. Look how they do that. How is this not just a big neon? You know, and even the blade stock on this, if I grab this, a production neon has a fatter blade stock than the Astra. Neon Zero. Just think about that. Put that into perspective. If you guys have a Neon Zero or a Neon NL or whatever, uh, all very similar, the Astra has a thinner blade stock than that. This is not a fat knife at all. I, I don't know how they do it. Like It's just uh, just incredible. Incredibly well done. I'd put it in the top five um, custom division knives for me that I've come across. Uh, you know, it's it's right on the mini mini quantum level, fit finish, everything's tight tolerance wise. Um, the action I'd say is a little different than some of the older ones. You know, the uh, the F3B and some of the other ones that people really the antique really really like. Um, I've yet to see an antique, by the way. Um, and, uh, apparently has incredible action. I think the milling on it is what sells me on that knife, but apparently incredible action. Uh, the action isn't as heavy, right? Because it's not a heavy blade. I will get a weight on it. I have my scale here as well. Uh, I can't see it being much more than four ounces because it doesn't feel heavy. But you never know. I seem to always be wrong. Any guesses? Four-ish? 4.2? 4.3? Not even close. 3.6? 3.6 ounces. So uh, from an ounce to in inches ratio, you're under the rule. The rule being whatever the blade length is, you want that knife to weigh the overall size of that. So if it's a three inch blade, you want it to weigh three ounces. If it's a four inch blade, you want it to weigh four ounces. 
we are less than the rule. 3.6 ounces for a 4 inch blade. With capability to run a lanyard. With the, uh, you know, external backspacer. Just incredible. You know, I, I've already said, you know, things that change. Obviously the backspacer, not a big deal. Um, personally, I, I just, I, I think they knocked it out of the park with this design. You know, I can say all day long I'd like Magna Cut and CD off the blade because it's in the cutting path, but no one's using these knives. Um, for production, maybe. Put the Shirgoroff Bear on the heel. That's where I like it. That's the sweet spot. And they did that on the Stellar already, which is right there. See the little Shirgoroff Bear? On this knife, they put it inside the handle. Inside there, which is, like, ridiculous to do, by the way. Ridiculous. Otherwise, there's not really a sheer Goroff logo on this, is there? Externally? Did we see any? No bear. Magna cut. No bear. It's all inside. Now, I thought, am I crazy, or did the sprint run Astrum have the bear on the heel, too? I thought it did. So that's a nice little, I, I never, I, I, I think that's what it was. I just, in my head, I can picture it there. But uh, maybe I'm wrong. I'm usually wrong, let's be honest. I'm not claiming to be right. I'm usually wrong. And I'm sorry for it. But anyway, guys, um, I think that will be it on the Astrum Custom Division Knife, or Astrum CD, uh, in Magna Cut. Super sick knife, incredible detail, and one that needs to be appreciated in person because it's just next level. And, you, like, your fingers just fall into these spots, and it just fits like a glove. Incredibly beautiful knife. Piece of art. So, that is going to be it. Appreciate you guys stopping by, taking a look at it. Check out bladezilla.ca and take a look at some of these knives. Um, and if you have any questions, hit me up. Uh, follow me on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Obviously, if you're here right now, just hit the like button and subscribe. And uh, more than anything, just hit me up. Let's chat. Love knives. All right, guys. Have yourselves a great week. And uh, we'll see you soon. Peace.